now, today, on this Yom Kippur, the most holy of holy days in this day of atonement. Atone, which means to repair and to reconcile. All right, who here knows that before Jesus became the ultimate scapegoat sacrifice, before Jesus, every year they had to do the same ritual. But who here knows that once and for all, it's done, it's finished. Jesus tore it in his body. The veil is torn. So now the glory of God is not just in one place, but now it manifests out. And it's in you as you walk out and move in and out of places because you are the tabernacle. Today, as it is Yom Kippur, in fact, uh, we're just in the last few hours of Yom Kippur in a sense. But this is a time frame where it is the most holy day, the most important, the most sacred day in all of Israel. Uh, Israel as a people. Uh, and also, it's the most important time frame, really, in the whole Bible, in the whole Torah, and the whole Word of God. So I, I, I want to give you some things here real quick. Because, uh, you know, it is the most holy day. And in a sense, you're supposed to be doing Shabbat or resting, uh, you know, although the priest did the ritual duties. But, you know, it's a time where people are fasting. It's a time where people are humbling themselves. It's a time where people are searching their hearts. And, uh, you know, uh, they're doing certain rituals so that they can see uh, their names sealed in the book of life. And not only that, but so that they could enter and break through into the next level. Some would say this, I am breaking through into the next level. If you, if you believe that, if that is you, some would say, amen. So I believe right now, today, as it's the most holy day, the Lord is making all things right. Very quickly, uh, Yom Kippur, uh, the Jewish people believe that this is actually the time, uh, what is it, the 10th uh, 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 day of Tishrei. Tishrei is this October month, all right, in Hebrew. But most Jews believe that this is the day, the time frame, where uh, uh, where Moses actually came down from Mount Sinai even the second time. Uh, most Jews believe that this is the second time where uh, Moses came down from the Mount Sinai. And who here knows? Everybody pray right now, please, because I'm getting all these texts and it's uh, distracting me right now. All right, uh, but pray that I'll, I'll be able to get this word through uh, clearly in Jesus' name, because uh, I don't want to take too much time, amen? Uh, but uh, the 10th day of Tishrei, which is the day of atonement, most Jews believe is actually the time frame where Moses came down from Mount Sinai the second time. Someone say second. Who here knows that God is not just the God of the first chance, uh, but he's also the God of the second chances. And who here knows that Moses, although he destroyed the first tablets out of anger, still, someone say still, still God had a plan, still God had a way, still God had a purpose, and still God turned bad and evil and negativity into good and into great. Someone say amen. So most Jews believe that this time frame, Yom Kippur, the most holy day in all of Israel, the most holy uh, festival, feast, biblical holiday, that it was the time frame where Moses came down from Mount Sinai the second time with the uh, the ark, the tablets of stone written with the Ten Commandments, all right? So uh, imagine Moses coming down in all of his array of glory, Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with all of his array of glory manifesting the transfiguration of his presence of Yah and carrying the very Ten Commandments, carrying the very stones, which we believe, we know is Jesus, amen, is the cornerstone because Jesus Jesus is the Ten Commandments. Jesus is the tablets. Amen. It's made out of stone. Jesus Christ is the stone, the cornerstone, the capstone. And so Moses came down with the Word of God, Torah. All right. Uh, excuse me. Moses came down with the Word of God, the Torah, which stood for Jesus. Came down from Mount Sinai, showing, manifesting that glory. But again, 40 days, second time of 40 days. And who here knows that 40 stands for a generation or 40 stands for 40 years in the wilderness. And I'm declaring over you that your 40 days of weeping, your 40 years of a vagabond wilderness warfare experience, that 40 day season, that 40 year season is over. Someone say it's over and now you're crossing through. Now you're crossing over. Now the Lord is going to say, uh, uh, you know, whatever you want of me, ask and I will show you my glory. And I believe right now in this time and the season, the Lord's causing you to cross over. Amen. And that's what Yom Kippur is all about. So the Jewish people believe 
Rabo Sabaka, the Jewish people believe that this Yom Kippur is that time. Amen. If you're with me, someone say amen, all right? And so Kippur, even in the Hebrew, uh, the original word for Kippur is Kippurim. Someone say Kippurim. All right, Kippurim, amen. He just keeps pouring it out, amen. But Kippurim uh, is the same word as deliverance. Someone say amen. It's the same word as deliverance. And guess what? In the days of Esther, it was uh, uh, it was uh, uh, deliverance. All right. In the days of Esther, uh, it was deliverance. It was Purim. All right. Now it was Purim. Someone say Amen. Because Purim stands for deliverance. Okay. Rabo Shaka Rabba. Purim stands for deliverance. All right. And it was a day and a feast of deliverance, which stood for Esther, which stood for the Esther call anointing. And so deliverance, Esther, is in Kippurim or the day of Kippur, Yom Kippur, today, right now, the most holy day where God is blotting out your sins. God is blotting out your transgressions. As far as the east is from the west, he will not count those things against you because of the blood of Jesus. And that is what this Yom Kippur day is all about. The most holy of holy days because it's the only day where the high priest which is Aaron or we know we have a great high priest which is Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach. But we know it's the only day in all the year where the high priest will go into the holy of holies. Someone say amen. Not just the holy place but the most holy place. Not just the holy place, but the most holy place. Who here knows that there are degrees to glory. There are degrees of glory. That's why the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that we go from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. All right, what does that mean? A measure or level, all right? Who here knows that degree also has to do with intensity or it has to do with the temperature. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you smell what the rock is cooking because it's only getting hotter? Degree, the degree is only getting weightier. It's only getting stronger. It's only getting hotter. The, the degree, the temperature is getting hot up in her. Someone say amen. And so there's a level of degree, not just holy, but the most holy, the holy of holies. And today Yom Kippur is the day where the high priest, one person out of all the priesthood, imagine that, think about that, all right, uh, whatever tribe, whatever ministry, whatever church, whatever family you're from, amen, come on, I'm from his way of life, all right, bam, 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 all right, whatever tribe you're from, imagine one person, one person out of that tribe, one person out of your ministry, one person out of that place, only one person represents God to man, and it represents a man to God. One person. And only one person, that person can enter into the Holy of Holies one day out of the whole year. One day out of the whole year. One day out of the whole year. And that is this season, people of God. So what does that mean? That means that the Lord is not only allowing us to enter in, but He's allowing us to abide there forever because we live in an abiding glory. We don't just go in and out, but we stay there. This is not the days of, you know, I'm holy one day, but the next day I'm a heathen. No, we are Christ-like every single minute, moment, second in Jesus' name, all right? This is not a time where we're going in and out of the glory, although we can move in and out of glory realms and dimensions. But this is a time where He has consumed all of us because there is no more veil, which means there is no more sacred and there is no more uh, secular. There is no more religion and there is no more uh, regular. It's all in one. It is all inclusive. So Someone say amen. Someone say, Jesus, give me an all-inclusive deal to Cancun. Someone say, Jesus, give me an all-inclusive deal to the Bahamas, to the Caribbean, man. Someone say, amen. It's good like Kong, man. Amen. So it's an all-inclusive thing. And so this is that time frame. It's the most holy of holy days. And it's the most holy of holy days. And it's a time where the high priest, which we know is Aaron, okay, which we know is Aaron, and only Aaron and those of his lineage were was able to come into the Holy of Holies and and bear witness or become that mediator. Someone say mediator. Listen, I, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody today or watching on the replay. I'm trying to help you because Jesus Christ is your mediator. He is your medium. 
Jesus Christ is your mediator, which means that he is like a terminator, and it means that he's like a gladiator, and it means that he is the one who is exterminating all of the warfare. He's the one who's exterminating all of the transgressions, all of the accusations, all of the naysay, all of the hatred, all of the hate say. He is the one who is mediating because he's speaking on your behalf. He's speaking on your family's behalf. He's speaking on your ministry's behalf. Come on now. He's speaking on behalf of the church of America. Come on. He's saying mercy, mercy, mercy. He comes before the father, the judge, the mercy seat. He says mercy, mercy, mercy. Come on. Not judgment. Mercy, mercy, mercy. And he comes before as our mediator bearing witness to what we've done in Christ Jesus by the grace of God through faith. Someone say amen. So it's a time where Aaron, the high priest, would come in, enter in, uh, one time throughout the year. And, and catch this. I, I want to teach on this real quickly. All right. I, I wish I had more time. I'm actually already late, but I'm not because I'm always on God's time. Amen. But it, the high priest usually would wear a whole ephod. All right. I, I got to do a separate teaching on this one day. A whole ephod. All right. The breastplate of righteousness. All right, would uh, have the umen and the thurum, uh, which stood for uh, the shoulders and the weight of the government of glory. Would wear uh, this beautiful blue cloth. I mean, uh, royalty dripping glory from head to toe, fresh to death, like Jazzy. Amen. So, uh, you know, so that's the normal vestige which separated from all the other priests, all the other Levites. All right, separated, all right? Because remember, Melchizedek, we are a holy priesthood unto the Lord. We are a kingdom of holy priesthood unto the Lord in the lineage and the lineage of Melchizedek, all right? And of course, the 12 stones would stand for each of the tribes. Someone say amen. Pentecostals, all right? Charismatics, Baptists, Methodists, Anglicans, all right? Uh, come on now, all right? Stand for the 12 tribes, all right? 12 stones. But, someone say but, B-U-T, but on the Holy of Holies in the Day of Atonement, the high priest, Aaron, would take off that vestige and would come into simplicity. Someone say simplicity. I'm trying to help somebody here today. Would come into simplicity and wear only white linen, wear only white linen as he would enter into the Holy of Holies. Where only white linen would stand for holiness, stand for purity, stand for innocence, stand for simplicity, stands for actually the natural uh, reflection of the Garden of Eden, which stands literally as nakedness before God. Nakedness before God. And would stand bare in a white linen as the high priest in the Holy of Holies before God the Father in the glory. And would bear intercession on behalf of us, the saints. Someone say amen. Bear intercession on behalf of us, the saints. And uh, the high priest would enter in three different times. All right, let, let me teach this correctly here. All right, uh, if you're receiving, someone say amen. Give me some hearts and likes. Share this. All right, I'm going to try to bring this to a close in the next five minutes. All right. The first time the high priest would enter into the most holy place. He would come to burn incense, all right, which represents the prayers of the saints and the priests, all right, would, would move out. The second time would come in, all right, uh, would uh, come in with the blood of, of the sacrifice of the animal, would come in with the blood, all right, amen. And then the third time the priest enters in would sprinkle the blood of the goat on the mercy seat. You see that? There are steps in the glory. There are steps in the most holy place. There are steps to come before God, to approach the king of glory. All right? And so that's what the high priest would do and would lay all of the sins and the guilt of the people on the scapegoat. And as a scapegoat, is led away to die, which stands for Jesus that was led away to die and to be crucified, amen? And as a scapegoat run away to die, that is the whole embodiment of who we are as the church because it encompasses and prophetically symbolizes 
who Jesus is. Someone say amen. It prophetically symbolizes of who Jesus is. And so there's these steps in the glory that the high priest or Jesus would move forth and move forward in. And watch this now. And now everything as the mediator is made right before God. Everything is made right before God. I wish you guys would catch this and hear me now because I'm about to close with a real strong finish. Everything in Yom Kippur, remember I said earlier, Kippurim stands for deliverance. Everything in Yom Kippur, this holy day, stands for Kippurim, which stands for deliverance. Which means that the glory of God will deliver and set the people free once and for all. It's His presence. It's the blood of the Lamb. It's the sacrifice of the scapegoat. Rabosha is the prayers which stand for the repentance of the saints. But it is the steps as we enter in. It is the mediation of Jesus Christ that once and for all cancels off all sins, cancels off all curses, cancels off anything that was done against against us and listen every single consequence as well someone say amen every single thing that was counted against us it cancels all of those things and now we therefore enter out we walk out with that great realm of glory and we walk out with that transfigured glory Christ in me, the hope of glory. We walk out as a transfigured glory and we're never the same again because the Bible says once and for all. Someone say once and for all. Once and for all. Which means complete reconciliation. I'm feeling a preacher. Listen, the Lord is going to reconcile every wrong thing in your life. Someone say amen. The Lord is going to reconcile every single thing that is wrong in your body, in your health, in your finances, in your relationships, in your ministry, in your family, because the blood speaks a better word and he is bearing intercession on behalf of the saints. And now, today, on this Yom Kippur, the most holy of holy days in this day of atonement, atone, which means to repair and to reconcile. All right, who here knows that before Jesus became the ultimate scapegoat sacrifice, before Jesus, every year they had to do the same ritual. But who here knows that once and for all, it's done, it's finished. Jesus tore it in his body. The veil is torn. So now the glory of God is not just in one place, but now it manifests out. And it's in you as you walk out and move in and out of places. Because you are the tabernacle. Rabo sabaka, rabo shaba, rabo. So now there's reconciliation. Apostle Paul says in the book of Corinthians, he is reconciling the world through us back to the Father. Do you hear me now? So now we become mediators. We become mediators, which means that when we speak a word, when we speak life, when we prophesy, wherever we walk, wherever the soles of our feet touch the ground, now we are actually canceling debts. We are Isaiah 61, setting the captives free. We are canceling curses. We are null and void. Oh, that devil put that thing on you. I cancel it now. That witch spoke that evil thing against you. I cancel it now. You will prosper. You will not die, but you will live, says the Lord. And we begin to speak life as kings and queens, as the priesthood, as mediators in Christ Jesus, because the Father is reconciling the world through us. That cross. The Lord is making every wrong thing right in your life. Now catch this. Why? Because the Holy of Holies, the mercy seat, where the, the kavod, the very presence of God, where he was seated on earth. Imagine that. One location. Hear this. One location where God the Father was seated on earth was in the Holy of Holies. One location. Think about that. President Trump right now is probably seated in the Oval Office at the White House in D.C., the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., right there. Imagine one location where God the Father seated in all the earth. And now that Jesus, the mediator, has torn the veil and now on his holy of holy days, because we are reconciled to God, now it's everywhere. The glory is everywhere. The glory of God manifests everywhere. So no longer is God the Father limited to one small locale, location. 
because there's sin and brokenness and death all across, all out, all around. But now because Jesus reconciled and he paid the price, so therefore the glory of God has opened the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Come on now. The dams are broken. It cannot hold it back. Nothing can hold back the power of the glory. The force of Jesus Christ. You are a force to be reckoned with. Do you hear me now, people of God? All right. Do you hear me now, people of God? I'm going to close with this because I already went over five minutes as every good old preacher says here. All right. I, I want to read this here um, and pray that uh, I want to read this here. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. And I did say this early. I did post this earlier today. Give me some hearts and likes if you're receiving. And uh, do share, share, share. Amen. Share, share, share. God bless you. Yom Kippur. We made it. We made it. Amen. I want to read very quickly. Revelation 3, 4 uh, for us. Uh, the Lord is ministering to me this morning. Uh, with this and through this and I, I, I want to share this before we just close and pray here all right praise the lord revelation 3 4 my laptop is very slow right now all right revelation 3 4 there are a few names even in sardis which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy someone say amen they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy someone say amen all right, let, let me get verse 5 here real quick. There's a, uh, he, she that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white garments. Someone say, praise the Lord. Come on, let me hear some tambourines. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Someone say, amen. Let me hear the church choir. Amen. The Bible says that... The one who overcomes, listen, the one who overcomes, I, I, oh man, I, I'm so, Sardis was a transitional city. It was a, Sardis in Turkey was a transitional city, which means that uh, it's a place that people will come in and out of. You are in a transition. You are in a transitional place. You are in a transitional place. And so Sardis is a transitional place. And Jesus was speaking to the church of Sardis and saying, there's still a few of you in that place of transition. Don't be offended at me. Don't become bitter. Don't become ill will. Don't fall into sin and temptation. I know you've been waiting for a long time, but don't turn like them. But in that place of transition, press into me, press into holiness, press into the glory. And in that place of transition, I have found a few people. Even if there's five of you watching, I found a few people. Someone said, amen. I found a few people that have been, have overcome. Come on now. Overcome. Someone said, I am an overcomer. Who here knows that the whole book of Revelation is actually about we, the church, overcoming as a bride of Christ. We're overcoming from all the tantalization of the harlot and of the dragon and of the Jezebel spirit in these times. We are the overcoming church. We are the bride of Christ. So the one that overcomes, you will be clothed in white. Someone say amen. All right. You will be clothed in white. And he will not blot out your name out of the book of life. But Jesus will confess your name. Oh my gosh. Jesus is confessing something. It's your name. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is confessing. Judge Ben Lim is innocent in your sight. And I will confess and boast in him before the Father and all the holy convocation of angels. Judge that woman of God watching right now. That man of God watching right now. I'm going to confess their name because they have not soiled themselves. But yet they chose to partner and align with the Spirit of God. And so therefore I have given them white garments not any garments the white garments from the priest high priest jesus christ someone say amen 
You will not be blotted out. You will not be blotted out. You will not be blotted out. Listen, I want to say to every single one of you guys, I love you. Happy Yom Kippur. Today's a day of deliverance, full deliverance. He's delivering you, setting the captives free from captivity. He, he's the God of deliverance. He's, he's the one who's entered in. So now not only do we enter in, but we abide and we are the abiding place of God. We are the dwelling place of the Lord Most High. He hides in you and you hide in him. It is a love thing. And he, he's a good matchmaker and he's matched us with Jesus. Someone say amen. Someone say, I receive my white garments. Someone say, I receive the inscription of my name in the book of life. Someone say, I receive it. That Jesus is gonna con is confessing my name before the brethren, before that devil, before my haters, before the Father. He is confessing. He's saying good things about me in the heavenly places. Someone say, Amen. He's making every wrong thing right in your life. That's why you're feeling shaky, you're feeling warfare, you're feeling little testings. But I declare over you the 40-day season, the 40-year season, 40 would stand for generation passing. It is over and you are crossing over. You have passed the test. It's a new day. It's a new day once and for all. It's a new day. It's a new year. It's a new season. And I'm going to end with this here. Someone say amen if you're receiving here. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4, 14 and 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. It's time for you to approach the throne of grace boldly as a son, as a washed, set free, forgiven, delivered. He speaks a good word about you. His blood speaks a better word. And it's time for you to approach God's throne of grace with confidence. So that you may receive, receive, keep receiving. Because as you receive, it's no longer just about you. But you become a conduit where you receive it for the world. You become a conduit and a channel and a flow of blessings for the whole entire world. It's time for you to receive, son of God. Don't be ashamed. It's time for you to receive, woman of God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be scared. Because he did it. And now you're standing before the Father in boldness. Because you know it with confidence that Christ Jesus is enough. Someone say amen. Someone say praise the Lord. Listen, guys, I love you. Give me some hearts and likes here. Do share, share, share. And listen real quick. I want you to write down, comment below what spoke to you the most. What did you learn? What did you receive? What is confirming? Uh, or what don't you like? You know, I, I, I like hearing feedback too. I, I, I love it when haters post negativity and all that. Bang, bang, bang. But let me know what inspired you, what blessed you. He's making all things right in your life. The Lord is with you. Happy Yom Kippur, Kippurim, which means deliverance. The most holy of holies, you are the tabernacle of the Lord. He walks with you. Where you go, he goes. Where you go, he goes. He's not just in one location now, but he's flooded the whole earth because we are the bride of Christ. We are the body. Someone say amen. Listen, I love you guys. God bless you, and uh, I hope to see you soon.